Why would any woman anywhere be supportive of Islam and Sharia? I'm Gina. I'm Anne Marie. I'm Sunny. I'm Morgan. And I'm Gopher from the Love Boat. <laughs> hey, Congressman Gopher to you. <laughs> How is it possible that any woman, or for that matter, any man on earth, would believe that Sharia law is a good or equitable thing? Well, we're talking to Sharia expert, Congressman Fred Grandy, on today's episode of Politichick. Today's guest is former Iowa Congressman Fred Grandy, who is a member of the Center for Security Policy. As a senior fellow for National Security Affairs, Fred Grandy, welcome to Politichicks. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. Thank it's you. been a long time since I've seen you. Yeah. <laughs> Barbie Benton, right? No, no, <laughs> Sorry. no. We sailed the love boat yeah. together. See? You were on seven episodes? Seven, yeah. seven. I sailed wow. the love boat seven times. That's, That's right. Amazing. Wow, good old days. See, now we've become serious conservative. Yeah, now we'll have to do the senior <laughs> tour. <laughs> I hate it. Yes, but see, we came to our senses we and did. looked at Hollywood for what it was, right? Right. Exactly. Right. And now we're looking at Washington for what it is. Congressman, why do you think that liberals don't seem to notice, or even worse yet, notice but then ignore the atrocities happening due to Sharia law? Well, because liberals and Islamists are fellow travelers when it comes to overturning the West and the government of the United States and democracy and pluralism and some of the things that Sharia obviously is totally opposed to. But you also have to understand that for decades, the Muslim Brotherhood has been waging an information war in this country with very sophisticated intelligence and public relations. As a matter of fact, if you go to www.muslimbrotherhoodinamerica.com, you've got a 10-part course taught mm -hmm. by Frank Gaffney, mm -hmm. which really lines this mm -hmm. out in very specific detail. But right now, as we speak, the present campaign to convince us that Sharia is totally compatible with our Constitution and our friend and fellow um, legal system is a group called the Islamic Circle of North America, another Muslim Brotherhood affiliate, that is spending $3 million to promote Sharia around the country, specifically in 25 cities. Mm -hmm. Kansas City, big billboards that say, got questions about Sharia? We've got answers. Oh, Public forum. I have a question oh, about beheadings and mutilations. I'm not for and, them. Yeah, me either. <laughs> okay. how, how can that be happening in America? Well, I don't think we're actually at the beheading stage in America, but we are yeah, having Stonies, honor killings. We're having honor killings. The honor killings. And right, there right. are examples, and let me give you a couple of examples that are in our courts right now. For those people that say Sharia cannot get into our legal system because the Constitution would prevent it, let me cite two examples. One is a now fairly famous case in New Jersey in which a woman was trying to get a restraining order from her husband because he was beating her regularly and raping her. Mm -hmm. When he went to court, the trial judge said, but this is essentially his right under Sharia, right? <laughs> this was the argument the, that, that the husband made. It was not until it got to the appellate level, one level up, that it was overturned. Uh, so you would ask yourself, how does this even happen in America? I, how does it? But it gets better than that. There's a case in Maryland, which is now about 15 years old, where a woman who fled to this country from Pakistan because of her abusive husband and brought her child was actually forced by a judge in this country, in our legal system, to send that child back to Pakistan with the father who claimed it is my right under <laughs> Sharia law. Oh, now, the judge said gosh. to her, you can, of course, go back to Pakistan and appeal this. And she said, but your honor, if I do that, under Sharia law, I'll be accused of adultery and perhaps face the death penalty. Right. He essentially said, not my problem. Oh my God. Oh that my decision gosh. was upheld. If you go to shariainamericancourts.com, which is another uh, web service that or a website that we are involved with through an organization called the American Public Policy Alliance, you'll see some, somewhere in the order of 50 cases where Sharia has permeated the American legal system in 27 states. So anybody who tells you it can't happen here is not even reading the news of the day. I, I just saw a 48 Hours episode, and it was an hour-long show, and it was all about, in Arizona, a man killed his, he ran over his daughter. Yes, that's a famous honor killing now. Right, right. Half an hour into this show, 
the host said the word Muslim. Not once during the entire hour did they say Sharia. They kept saying honor killing over and over, honor. And I don't even like that word being used in this instance. Well, the, but that's all, they never said Sharia. You see, the problem, and this is a good point, Anne-Marie, because the honor killings don't even get into the legal systems yet. This, this is still at the police and investigatory level. But there's a, an even more telling case in Florida of a young woman who was fleeing her husband and trying to get a divorce because he was abusive, moved back in with her parents, who were very supportive of the husband because under Sharia, of course, the male is dominant. Mm -hmm. She apparently killed, was killed, but according to the police report, committed suicide in her parents' house. You know how she did it? She banged her head against a coffee table until she died. Whoa. That was ruled a suicide. Wow. Unreal. Blunt it's trauma to the head, self-induced time and time again. Oh so gosh. you see what's happening here. Mm -hmm. The legal system, the law enforcement system is being compromised mm. by a kind of cultural bias towards this new religious-based yeah. legal system that, of course, is all over Europe. No. Yeah. I mean, right. they have oh, yeah. arbitration oh, yeah. panels right. in Germany. Right. They've got something like 87 Sharia oh, courts mm -hmm. in Great Britain. Mm. So mm -hmm. the, the rights of women, and this, this is the point I want to leave with, with all of you, is if there is a war on women mm -hmm. in this country, yeah. it is oh. Sharia's war yeah. on women. Absolutely. And, because Absolutely. your rights are one half of a man. And the hypocrisy on the left is staggering. Where are the women's groups? Where are the right. gay rights groups? Now. Where well, are now. they? Why well, are they but, not but, speaking? But wait a minute, here's how they argue this. They say, but this is their right to practice their religion oh. in this country. Even if it's abusive. But if really? It's, but if, if, if it was Christi us? If Christianity was the target of it, where they say, like a woman says, she stays home, the single mom who stays home that actually wants to value the oh, traditional that's, family. That's different. Oh, yeah. That's just that's, a bunch that's, of conservatives. That's a war. Yeah, yeah, no, but, no. but oh. when it comes to Sharia and there's actual violence, there's actual cases, there's actual, Murders. you know, things like where, where's, like they said, where's your bra burning for this one? How many women have to be, um, have to be killed or subjected to secondhand status, not only here in America, but all around the world before they actually stand up and, and say but that it's not what, that's what acceptable. you said, uh, Fred, you said that their, their agendas Inner, inner cross. They do. They do. They intertwine they, they because, intertwine. again, if, if the goal is to bring down capitalism and democracy and pluralism, then they're fellow travelers for the time being. Now, women, homosexuals, apostates, Christians, Jews, mm -hmm. non-Muslims, are the first up against the wall in a completely Sharia-compliant <laughs> right, yeah, regime. Right. If you don't believe me, look at Iran, look at Sudan, look mm -hmm. at the places where these are actually happening, where limbs are being hacked off. But for the time being, this kinder and gentler version of Sharia being advanced <laughs> by, and these are legitimate organizations. Believe me, the Islamic Society of North America, their executive director serves on a Homeland Security Advisory Committee telling our intelligence professionals what they can and cannot say. Oh. You know what they can't say anymore? Islam, Jihad, mm -hmm. and Sharia. Yeah. Because that would be, to some degree, uh, Islamophobic. How, co how complicit is our media in this? Because when we yeah. last spring we were sitting and we were watching the A Arab Spring, uh, you know, go through all out the Middle East, and you had the woman that was actually raped in Egypt, and mm -hmm. no one wanted to talk about her. No one wants to talk about the Coptic Christians and what's going on with them now in Egypt. But we're still sending money to fund Egypt. So how? I mean, how how do you get the message out to really let the American people know that if 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 you do not pay attention, it will come to us through mm -hmm. complacency. Well, if not you, then who? I mean, 1.5 yeah. billion to Egypt right now, yeah. no okay. strings attached. Right. 147 million to the Palestinian Palestinian Authority, mm -hmm. which is going to go directly to Hamas, mm -hmm. which is obviously the most virulent Islamist government next to Iran in the world right oh, yeah. now. Oh, yeah. Congressman, is part of the problem our Judeo-Christian heritage that believes that most people sort of subscribe to these Ten Commandments. Even if they don't really know them, they sort of know them. You don't lie, you don't cheat, you don't steal, you don't kill. Where Sharia law says, for Allah, all of the above are not only uh, acceptable, but admired to lie, to cheat, to steal, to kill. Yes. Is, is part of it our orientation as a country? Yes, and under Sharia, Again, one of the prohibitions is never speaking ill of Islam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you hear people calling us Islamophobic, when we're talking about the doctrine that is embedded in this religion, 
they're accusing us of violating their First Amendment rights to practice their religion. Right. So you see how cunningly they have used our own Constitution against sure. us. They're sure. essentially obliging us to tolerate intolerance. And this goes back to your question uh. about the media. Mm -hmm. Because the media buys this lock, stock, yeah. and barrel. Sure. They support this. They immediately latch on to Islamophobia just the way they react, latch on to a white version of racism. Mm -hmm. Or they are proudly anti-Semitic when they talk about Israel's you know, right to uh, exist. Right. To exist. <laughs> right, um, right. And, and these are the kinds of things that unless there are programs like this, and then this is why I want to keep going back to this war on women. If Sharia, stopping Sharia is not a women's issue in this country. Yeah, there are no women's, women's issues. issues. That's right. And, yeah, that's and quite right. honestly, it is very important for women to carry this message. Uh, right. just, just let me tell that's you one right. quick story of a friend of ours who works at the center and runs an organization called the Alliance of Iranian Women. She escaped to this country years ago from Iran. And she has said repeatedly, I came to this country to get away from Sharia and now it's following me here. Oh. She lives in wow. suburban Maryland, mm -hmm. just outside of Washington, D.C. About three months ago, she was, in the sh she was in the parking lot of a Safeway store when she saw a young woman in full burqa, completely covered with a little kid in tow. And this woman, uh, who considers it her duty to kind of advise people as to what their rights are in this country, went up and said to this woman, you know, you don't have to do that in this country. The woman went into a tirade, and our friend pulled away. She went home. Two hours later, the cop showed up her, oh, at her gosh. door, oh, accusing oh. her of harassment. Well, we hate to end on that, but unfortunately, I, that's where we are. I was hoping we'd end on that. We have <laughs> Isn't that a, great we have way a to lot end more to talk about on this <laughs> subject, but that's all the time we have. Thank you so much. Fred Grandy, and please check out the Center for Security Policy. They do some amazing work. And thank you for watching Politichicks TV, the right kind of PC.